है Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this event. This is the international guest lecture from Cookman University and ITPLN. And today's subject is semiconductor and photovoltaic with Professor Yunjin Lee, and the topics. Uh, photovoltaic and solar resource forecasting. For before we start, uh, I would like uh, to have uh, several announcement. For all the students, please turn on your camera. Yeah, and then the second, if you want to have a question, you can type down on the chat box or you can uh, raise your hand for us directly. And today we have a uh, professor Hyun Jin Lee. Uh, we are delivering the presentation about estimation and prediction of solar irradiation. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to this program, Professor. Uh, it's really an honor to me. I, I never presented online. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sir, th uh, thank you very much uh, for your time, and please, uh, this is, uh, the time is yours, sir. Mm -hmm. Actually, I expect a one-hour lecture, is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. okay. Uh, my name is Dehan Tiffany in Kumin University. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I do, not, uh, I do not have any background of uh, Yeah, it's okay. Right. Professor, the I'm sorry, the PowerPoint doesn't move, Professor. It doesn't move. Yeah. Does it come? Why? I'm sorry. Maybe you can uh, you can click on the uh, presentation or the PowerPoint, Professor. Usually, uh, it will come again. Just a second. Let me share it again. All right, sir. How about now? Do you see? Yes, you can see. I'm not sure which is. I have a dual monitors. I'm not sure which one do you see now. 
<laughs> the greenhouse effect and climate change. How about now? Uh, it doesn't move, Professor. Can you m maybe? Yeah. Uh, you the... Doesn't move, Professor. It is still in the greenhouse effect and climate change. How about now? Uh, not, not moving also. What's going on? <laughs> it's okay, Professor. Do you see any change? Uh, no, no, sir. How about now? Uh, still on the page of greenhouse. Nah, okay, it's moving. It's moving right now. Primary and secondary uh, energy. I want to use the full screen. Yes. Uh, Can you have a full screen? Can you click it, Professor? Mm -hmm, I clicked it. But now there's nothing. <laughs> Okay, we have seen the... I'm changing the slide. Do you see the change? Yes, uh, we can see the changes now. This, this is the first slide, Professor. How about now? Uh, no, <laughs> nothing moves, Professor. Nothing moves? Yeah, yes. Maybe, uh, can you send the PowerPoint to the chat box, Professor? So I will, uh, I, I will present from here. Can I control the slide? Uh, yes, you can control the slide. Uh, you, uh, I can admit you to control the slide. So, what's your email? Uh, How to send the email to you? This is, uh, I will, I will send to the chat box. Here, Professor. There's a chat box. There's a chat. Can you see it, Professor? I'm sorry, I cannot see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never used this. So... Okay, uh, I have uh, I have sent you an email for you, Professor. Maybe you can open your email. I have sent him an email for you, sir. You can open your email and you can reply it. Okay. Last night I have sent your email. I have sent e the email for you. I'm sorry, Professor, you use the Microsoft theme, so you doesn't familiar to use it. Uh, I'm sorry, I never used that this one. <laughs> yeah. In Indonesia, in ITPLN, we use Microsoft Teams for a uh, lecture. <laughs> I don't understand why. Uh, yeah, sometimes, no? s sometimes, yeah, there's some problems, Professor. So, without full screen, can you see the movement, the change? Yes, without full screen, we can we can see the changes. But uh, with the full screen, you cannot see the change. Uh, yes. Yes or no? No, no. Yes. Uh, with the we, with the full screen, we all just only like uh, we we only see like this on the screen, professor, and it doesn't move anything. Only the first slide. Yes, only the first slide. I 
it's okay if we doesn't uh, doesn't have the full screen, Professor. Have you have you sent the email, Professor? How about PDF? PDF. Okay. Can you move? Oh, it's good, Professor. Is it better? Yeah, is it better? Yes, we can see the changing slides. But I cannot use pointer here. Oh, you can. Uh, oh yeah, maybe you can uh, like. Okay, anyway, let's let's use the PDF file. Okay, <laughs> maybe you can, Professor. You can uh, maybe there is a like comment circle and others. Maybe you can you can write it on your screen. There's like a circle on the yeah uh, uh like a circle so yeah like a uh, below the uh, highlight yeah I think that's better yeah okay, okay <laughs> perfectly on. professor yes please uh, so anyway let's move quickly so this is the rapid temperature increase so there is for a long time, it's all a little bit not sure, but these days it's kind of the official opinion by the global experts. So this is a greenhouse effect, and then climate change. So these are some of the uh, background of uh, energy. We say these are primary, primary energies, and then using the primary energies, we are going to convert into secondary energies. Let's just see the primary. You can classify again renewable versus non renewable. In renewable, you have a solar, hydro, biomass, wind. On the other hand, non renewable, you have what? Fossil fuel, like coal, nuclear, and natural gas. So these energy resources you can convert into secondary energy. In the main important the secondary energy is electricity, definitely in modern society. Uh, electricity is quite important energy type. The other one, heat. You know, for a long time, mankind has used heat. And in addition, you may have a oil product and synthetic fuels. We have to focus on the electricity. And somehow heat, but the mainly it is the main target of the energy when you produce but electricity by renewables. Let's just see it. renewable are share out of the final energy in the world. You see, in 2019, out of the 100 percent, still a major portion lies in fossil fuels, more than 80 percent. But uh, here, other parts. Uh, modern renewables has increased from 8.7 to 11. I mean, the final energy means everything, not secondary energy. So, if you see the uh, renewables, you can see wind, solar, bio, geothermal, ocean, still, what's the major power of renewables? Hydro. And then traditionally, we use a biomass and others as a heat, usually. So this is our final energy. But if you see our electricity only, you know, electricity is a little bit uh, precious, a little bit expensive energy time. So the portion has increased compared to the previous one. It was only less than 20, but here, out of the electricity, the occupation of the renewable energy is more than a quarter, 27%. It's keep increasing these days. So if you see the breakdown, still hydropower is dominant. Why? Because it's proven and then it's inexpensive compared to other renewables. But these days, wind and then solar as a modern renewables are increasing. I'm not sure your country, but uh, in Korea, we are a little bit far from this value. This is a global, global mean. Mm -hmm. 
probably your country may have more than 27 percent. The RE grows by technology. So I mentioned that hydropower is a traditionally important renewables. It's, as I said, it's inexpensive, proven. However, its environmental impact is huge. Therefore, these days, the installing hydropower is not easy. So, other types of renewables, such as solar PV, wind power, are increasing more. You see, solar PV is the yellow, is the most recent mm. installation, and the next wind. So these two solar and wind are two major renewables. Uh, Let's see, let's uh, focus on solar energy more. So let, what's the features of solar energy? It's abundant on Earth. You know, everything comes from the sun uh, in the form of solar radiation. Furthermore, ubiquitous, it, it exists everywhere on the Earth. So, for example, your country is abundant in fossil fuels, but uh, Korea, we don't have fossil fuels enough. Instead, we have a sun. Oh. So, anyway, sun is not abundant, <laughs> by the way. Nevertheless, uh, with the sun, we can produce electricity if we cannot import uh, any fossil fuels. So that's another big uh, advantage. Of solar energy. And then annual energy consumption by humans is just a one hour solar energy on Earth in terms of the amount. The problem is this amount of energy will be distributed over the surface of the Earth. Therefore, if you want to make, if you want to collect this energy, you must install really, really, really large area of solar PV. That's the problem. Okay, so energy density is uh, much less than fossil fuels. That's the problem of renewables. Anyway, if we see the potential solar per year, I, I will skip the, the unit. 23,000. But the uh, other renewables, wind, 25 to 7, 70, and ocean, Biomass, hydro, geothermal, tides. World energy use, you see, it's only 16, but the 2050, we expect the 28. So solar is really, really uh, large compared to the human energy consumption. On the other hand, if we see the finite, usually the fossil fuel and nuclear, you see the potential amount is much less than annual solar energy. But uh, as I said, to utilize the solar energy, we must install a huge area of, of solar panels. That's the problem. Solar PV, I believe you learned the solar PV already. So already you have a background. It's an energy conversion device from solar radiation to electricity. This is a, how to say, solar cell based on the Kian Junction here. If light comes in, an electron and hole will be generated. We are going to collect electron and then make a circuit through the exter external load. Therefore, you can produce power. So it's a solid state device. So based on the cell, you can put them as a one module, and then as an array. Finally, you can produce a direct current, DC power, and then controller, inverter, to make a AC, then finally, you can connect into the grid, or you can directly use for uh, your home or wherever. Solar for overtake power. <coughs> Let's just see solar radiation. This is a schematic for the sun. 
the temperature inside of the sun is quite high, <laughs> really very high, based on the nuclear fusion. So the hydrogen becomes healing, but uh, this is the internal temperature, but uh, there are many, it's a, I think it's a plasma state, so ions, the hydrogen ions, can absorb radiation from the core. So there is a certain layer, and then after the sudden convection transfer, finally, the surface temperature of the star is much less than this value. But I'm not sure. Quite large. But anyway, the surface temperature is around 6,000 Kelvin. So this surface temperature is important. Why? Solar radiation will be determined by the solar surface temperature on that internal temperature. So, more realistic value is 5,700 Kelvin, approximately. Yeah. You know, it changes a little. But anyway, this is a little better approximation. So, we can assume the sun is a kind of the black body. If you learn the black body radiation, you can calculate the power from a black body. Because sometimes emission from, from a black body. So, this is a random equation to, to calculate power from a black body. You see, sigma is a constant, Stefan Boltzmann constant. Therefore, emission power is only function of surface temperature. If you plug in surface temperature here, then you can calculate power from the sun. Actually, power density, what? What per meter square? So this is a value from the sun. But they either uh, spread out over the space. Do you see it? Yeah. But, uh, only a small part, a small fraction will reach to the Earth. So we must consider the fraction uh, available on Earth. So you must imagine this kind of the virtual sphere. This sphere radius, the distance between Sun and Earth. This is Earth. So this is a distance D, and then out of it, you can calculate power because it was a watt per meter scale. You must, you must multiply area of this the sun surface. So R square done. Actually, there was a pi. Pi was cancelled out. So you can plug in radius of the sun, and then calculate it. And then you can plug in this value, this sun. And what do you get? You get this one. So actually, this is a power density from the sun. However, on Earth, you only receive 1300, exactly 1370 watt per meter square. That's the limitation on Earth. Okay? Furthermore, it's extraterrestrial. What's the meaning of the extraterrestrial? It's out of the atmosphere in the space. So we have an atmosphere over there. There are some mechanisms, but usually they cause energy loss due to absorption and scattering by atmosphere. So also there is the spectrum change. Direction also changes. Therefore, in the space, light travels as a beam. However, here, due to the scattering, there is a direct component definitely, but uh, also we have diffuse component. So, under the clear sky, clear sky it was 1370, but uh, it reduced up to 1000 only. So, here, this value sometimes we call solar constant because it's constant outside of the atmosphere. But if you see this, uh, this flow, it was 100% at the space. But uh, due to the atmosphere, 
as you see, absorption, but ozone, dust, air molecules, water vapor, others. So on the clear sky, only 70% reach to the ground. And then scattering. So after scattering, again, 10% reach. So roughly 70 to 80% will reach to the ground. It was 1370 now, roughly. If you remember this value, it's really useful. Anyway, due to scattering here by the ozone, it was a spectrum outside. However, on the ground, we have different spectrum. So we must know this value. But, uh, as you know, there are clouds and others. Therefore, this value will change a lot uh, locally and uh, temporally. Uh, it's well known. If you see the power output of PV panels, most important factor, definitely solar irradiance. You know that. You purchase solar panel from a company. The model, the PV model is determined. So efficiency is given. Then what affects to the power of PV, PV panel? Most important one, solar irradiance, maybe others like the temperature also. Temperature, high temperature gives, but efficiency reduction of a PV. So, and then maybe dust also. However, most important parameter to change the PV power is the solar irradiance. You see the solar irradiance, PV power almost uh, proportional to each other. So, what's important? If you want to estimate PV power, uh, it's really important to estimate solar irradiance. So, if you know the solar irradiance, then you can calculate PV power. That's the reason we study solar <coughs> irradiance. Here, I want to clarify some terminology. I prefer using irradiance. It's what formula is clear. However, Insulation is what our parameter scale. So it's kind of the, you know, what our, it's a 3,600 joule. So it's the unit of energy. It's a unit of power. <laughs> so in irradiance, you can multiply time. Then it becomes insulation. Okay. If you remember these words, you can uh, catch this slide. GHI, DNI, DHI. I mentioned that uh, because of the atmosphere, the solar radiation will have two components. First, direct. Even though there is a scattering, some parts still maintain its direction from the sun. It's direct. Okay? In the clear sky, you can see the direction of the sun. And then the other component is diffuse because of atmosphere, molecules in the atmosphere. They scatter the solar radiation. As a result, the solar radiation will distribute over the uh, sky. And then what's next? Normal. It indicates the surface direction. Direct normal means, as you see here, there is a sun. Light comes in from the sun. This is a normal direction to the sun surface. Sun disk. So always this surface will face the sun. This is the direction of normal. So DNI means you are going to measure solar radiation always when you face the sun. What does it mean? It means you must install solar tracker mm -hmm. so that this surface always to see the sun. Okay, see that, see that D is a sun genius angle. DHI, DHI means diffuse component. Here I show the arrow from the sun directly. The DHI means horizontal surface. You can, you can place the surface on the ground in a horizontal plane. You don't need to move it. You can just fix it, install it. Then measure 
the direct diffuse component one. GHI is some of them. GHI means global. Global means global means some of direct and diffuse. And then we are going to install the surface on the ground of that. So GHI is a total value. But because of the direction, you must multiply cosine theta z. So Ni times cosine theta z plus GHI becomes GHI. If you remember this word, you can understand more clearly. Generally, without any specification, when you say irradiance or radiation, it refers to uh, GHI. So how to measure solar irradiance? This is a GHI measurement. On a flat surface, you can collect all the light. I measured the DNA. We must track the sun. This is a DNA. So this is a solar tracker. Furthermore, only we received a direct component on, on, without diffuse. So if light comes through the surface, it will reach to the bottom of the sensor. However, if it comes in oblique direction, not direct, it will hit the wall of this tube. So it won't reach the sensor. So this is a direct measurement. How about the HI? I mentioned that it only measure diffuse component. How? We must eliminate direct component. Do you see the ball here? It tracks the sun. It always blasts the sun. Therefore, direct component won't reach to the sensor. Only diffuse component will reach. So to measure DNA, DHR, we must have this kind of sun tracker, or accurate sun tracker. So this is an important one. So if we have a solar panel, what irradiance reaches to the solar panel? I'm sorry, it's in Korea. This is a DNI, not exactly DNI. Anyway, direct component, DNA multiply the actually cosine beta. But uh, forget this one. Anyway, I would say, I'm sorry, I need eraser. Oh. Anyway, this is a direct component. Direct component will reach to the panel. On the other hand, scattered, diffuse, diffuse from the sky can reach to the panel. The third one, the light goes to the ground and then small part will reflect, okay, reflect from the ground. So this reflected light can come to the panel. So these three components, direct, diffuse, Reflect component will, will be instant on the panel. So how to calculate the PV power? Power from PV, which is electricity. You know the efficiency of the panel. When you purchase the panel, you can know the efficiency. Here, you can multiply what? T, solar radiation. Watch this. As I said, this one, direct and reflection component. When you have a non checking system, however, if you have a tracker and then concentration, then you may use a lens or mirror. Then you're not going to use a diffuse component, only direct component only. So this is a tracking based solar PV. So we are focused on this fixed PV. Here, to indicate this solar irradiance, onto the surface, usually panel is tilted. So we may say global, you know, meaning of global, it refers both direct and diffuse. Tilted, tilted means surface. It's a tilted surface. So GTI, tilted surface irradiance. Or in PV guys, usually they use a POA, plane of array irradiance. So this refers to the irradiance onto the PV panel. This is the equation. As I said, this is GTI, direct, 
reflection and sky to recompose it. So, we understand solar irradiance is important to, but to get a large amount of power from PV. So before you install it, you must see where is a good place. You see, uh, in the global map, like uh, Sahara Desert, Australia, Chile, or California, South Africa, these areas are quite high solar irradiance. So you can install those countries. How about your country here? Yeah. yeah. Better than Korea. <laughs> Definitely. In, in the middle. <laughs> uh, so, question, how to make this kind of a map? You're not going to install the sensor. I already showed the sensors. The sensors will be located in some position only, some station only. We're not going to measure everywhere. So this is a result from modeling. So that's the reason I want to say modeling, estimation. So now you have a company. Your company wants to install PV power, PV power plant where? In this island or in the Sahara Desert? Have you ever measured solar genesis over there? I don't think so. So they must estimate to make a what? Profitability or feasibility of your power plant. That's the first step. So this one is needed. I mean, the estimation of solar irradiance is needed. Now, oh, I spent almost 30 minutes. I spent uh, just to finish the introduction. Anyway. Introduction is the most important. Don't worry too much. Yeah. So this is uh, really technical issues. But uh, I have a question. Have you learned uh, this basics before? Sorry, Professor, can you repeat the question? I just explained the basics of the solar radiation. Have you learned, have you taught, um, the, for you, have you taught these topics before? Okay. Basics. Basic. Ya, yeah. uh, maybe I will translate to Indonesia. Para mahasiswa sudah pernah belajar tentang solar radiasi tadi. Student, have you ever learned about uh, the solar radiation and also the measurement of solar? Please answer. Belum, uh, uh, some of them uh, not yet, Professor. That's better. <laughs> okay. So, from now on, I'm going to explain how to get these data. So this is a little bit technical issue. So I will, I think um, I can move on. So first one, if I see the content introduction, okay? It was the introduction. Now, I will say estimation. Now, next, I will say forecasting. Forecasting is the same word as prediction. What's different? Prediction, uh, estimation and forecasting. Estimation means same time. Oh. Now, nobody measured solar irradiance at a certain location. Then how to estimate solar irradiance? That's the problem. How? Using other weather elements, like using the ambient temperature, using cloud cover, so maybe temperature or wind speed, humidity are available. So using other weather information, we can estimate solar irradiance because solar irradiance measurement, as I said, it needs special sensors. So if solar radiation data is not available, you must estimate without other information, other data. What's the prediction and forecast? It means now I have a irradiance data. We can model, we can estimate, that's one A, or we measured already. We have data at the current time, but the, what's the problem? I want to know PV power tomorrow or several hours later. Why? Because solar radiation, solar energy is variable, changeable, intermittent. That's the problem you know already. So, 
forecasting is another time necessary to control PV power. The best way, definitely. What's the best way? I will explain later. Anyway, let's move on. The meaning of estimation. Estimation means no solar radiation irrigation data. Therefore, we want to estimate now. It's important to what? For, you know, visibility. Visibility. Okay. Whenever you construct power plant, you must check the visibility. For example, you will think about what will be the cost, then what will be output income from the power plant. You must compare then if output is larger than cost, you will really invest whenever you invest the power plant. So feasibility is needed in the beginning. For the feasibility assessment, we need solar irradiance. Why? You know that. So PV power is heavily dominant on solar irradiance. So this is the estimation model. How mainly we can classify statistical semi empirical based on the satellite data and physical model. Three categories. First one, statistical. It's a really, really simple, uh, conventional. This is just one example. GHR is a function of that, what? Solar constant. I mean that the solar constant. What's that? Extraterrestrial. 13, 7, what per minute scale something. And then, C D D, you can calculate the sum position, constant, empirical constant, and correlation coefficient. CC, cloud cover, temperature, now, three hours before, in the past, and then humidity, wind speed, and then constant. This is a really, really correlation equation. It works for a certain location. I may have our model in Korea, but I'm not sure this works for Indonesia. Yeah. Why? Because probably we determine the these constant based on the certain location only. It's a simple one, easy, but accuracy could be low. What's next? Instead of the statistical model, it's based on the weather measurement. We may use the satellite data. These days, there are many meteorological satellite data. In Korea, we have a GK2A. We have a, several sensors on the satellite, including like what? IL visible sensors. So we usually we use a visible sensor, like a resolution of 4.5 kilometers. <clears throat> so for example, if we see the visible sensor data, you can plot it as like an image, and you can see the cloud here, and then clear sky. So this is a satellite data using the visible sensor or near infrared, in, just infrared sensors. So you can see clouds. Why? Clouds is the most dominant factor in solar agents. Definitely others like a dust or a vapor also affect. However, cloud is the most dominant factor in solar gradients. So we say semi-empirical. We use this information. However, we cannot determine everything. So similar to statistical model, we must determine some part. So here, anyway, let's see the concept only. The solar radiance, GHI, is a function of something. What's this one? Clear sky. Clear sky GHI. So from the clear sky GHI, you can get the reduction. This reduction is a function of CI. CI is a cloud index. Clear sky is zero. So same as clear sky GHI. CI1 means overcast. Sky is fully covered with clouds. So this is a function. If you calculate this one and then clear sky GHI model is well known. So you can clear sky radius and then clear out this part. So you can calculate GHI. Okay. We conduct it. We determined the, these models. I'm not going to explain too much. You see some values. Uh, therefore, semi-empirical, statistically determined. Anyway, physics and empirical correlation are mixed. So 
this one is well known. I mentioned that global map is created usually using this method, semi-empirical, based on the satellite data. This model is well known for estimation. On the other hand, we can use a physical model. It's a purely physical. How? It's solved. Radio traffic equation over the sky, atmosphere, sky comes, it's ground, and then scattering, beam, all together. Sometimes reflection. A little bit complicated. So this is a governing equation. Radiative transform equation for the sky. Some information also. If you see the equation, GHI clear sky, DNI times GHI, TR, it's a ready scattering transmitter. But many ozone, nitrogen, water. So what's the problem? To calculate each term, we must know many parameters, many data. That's the problem. Equation is rigorous. However, input data could be less accurate. That's the problem. So physical model accuracy is always better than semi-empirical model because of the input data accuracy. Anyway, you can count the clear sky, over sky radiance, and then this is a CI for weight factor, and then you can calculate GHI. So third model is physical model. Let me show this one. This is an important figure. This is a distance from the station. So this is your location, but the near, there are two, maybe not two. This is a station. So you measured solar radius, but the, this position, you are going to install PV. In this site, you have a, you never measured solar radius. Then what's the best way? Use the nearest station data. This is the distance from the nearest station. So at a short distance, definitely accuracy is small. But the, as the distance increase, accuracy increase. On the other hand, this is the, the accuracy based on the semi-empirical model. You see this line and this curve intersect around this point. What's the conclusion? If this nearest station is 20 or 30 kilometers apart, then you cannot use measured data from this uh, measured data. In the case, just the modeling can guarantee similar accuracy. Do you understand? So if your PV location is 20 or 30 kilometer apart from the weather station, then it's better to use modeling, estimation model. Okay? So that's the reason we use uh, this kind of the model. Therefore, recently, company or American government-based laboratory also use an estimation model rather than ground measurement. So, this is estimation. I said that why we need estimation of solar radiation. You may not remember three models, but uh, as I said, estimation is needed to launch your PV power project. Why? We need to estimate this project will be profitable or not. Okay? Mm, that's the first part of the solar irradiance estimation. What's next? As I said, this is uh, some case when we install PV power plant a lot. Sometimes we say dot com. Dot com. Why? Let's see the example from California. I think so, many of you have heard of this. Mm -hmm. This is a blue line load by consumers, houses, industry. It increases when, as the time goes, in the afternoon, usually it has a peak where uh, around the 6 or 5 p.m. When people hanging around or still active, 
it goes down at night. This is a load profile. How about the PV? I'm the, I'm the, uh, but I'm sorry. The load, when you have a solar and wind, for example, because of solar, you know, power production occurs during the daytime. Therefore, this load will reduce by solar power. This is a solar output. You must subtract this part. Therefore, why? Because renewable has a priority compared to the fossil fuels. Fossil fuels just take care of the rest of power demand, which is this uh, orange one. So if you install more, it becomes deeper and deeper. So what's the problem? The grid controller has a problem because this value is not stable. Sometimes if sun is really, really sunny, then you can see deep. But the one day it's cloudy, then nothing. The same as blue. So this variation occurs. So this is a one major issue. When you control uh, power supply, so grid controller wants to know this kind of the variability, but it's really difficult. How to solve this problem? Definitely ESS, energy storage system by hardware. You can put battery or pump the hydropower, whatever, compressed air, so many types of ESS. So when you have a excessive energy, you can save it during the daytime and use it at night. That's the one way. Therefore, battery companies goes well these days. What's the problem? This is just storage. If we install too much, it's a waste of money. It must be optimized, okay? Storage sometimes cannot won't be used. So minimum or optimal size of storage is good. So it's problem of cost. What's the second way? Based on the forecast, you can control. Okay? Forecasting, simple. It's a problem of control. You don't need to install many hardware. Okay? Furthermore, it will help to utilize ESS more efficiently. So forecasting is important. Therefore, for example, there is an incentive. This is one example in Korea. I'm sorry, it's in Korea. In Korea. This is a power plant, renewable power plant. I am a power plant owner. Mm -hmm. And I can report to the grid controller. Oh, tomorrow we will have 100% up then grid controller expect 100% output from this power plant. Then they control. If my forecast is correct within 8%, then controller will give money back, incentives. Do you understand? Yeah. So grid controller on have a forecast power output from each plant and they collect information. Therefore, they can control or reduce LNG power or increase other fossil fuels. So this is uh, how we work in Korea based on the forecast. So this is uh, purely based on the modeling on control. So it's a little bit inexpensive and then really helpful. So in Korea, we have this kind of the regulation, incentive, uh, government, policy. <laughs> Probably also the California also has, if your country has enough renewable power plant, then your country will have this kind of the policy. So for forecasting, there are <laughs> several models. <laughs> Definitely for forecasting, we need the estimation models because this is a next step. One way, statistical model, based on the historical data. So this is a now. 
this is a past, this is a future. Based on the data from the past now, con estimate future forecast using statistical model. That's one way. The other one, I mentioned that satellite based image can be used. Here, we can combine it motion of cloud. Say cloud motion vector, then we can estimate cloud distribution in the future. Third way, it's a physical, physical model, numerical weather prediction. It's similar to physical model for future. So three models have a different uh, advantages and disadvantages in terms of spatial resolution and temporal horizon. For example. Uh, there is another type, sky image. You can watch the sky using your camera. Then take a picture to see cloud motion. Sky image is really, really local. Therefore, temporal, temporal horizon less than one hour. It only works for several minutes. And then it works only short spatial resolution within one kilometer. Statistical, it works for short spatial resolution. And then, depending on the model, it could be reached 100 several days. But I, I don't think so, its accuracy is quite good. On the other hand, semi satellite images can see temporal horizon several hours, but uh, several tens of kilometers. For tomorrow, or several days ahead, we need numerical weather prediction. It covers more than 100, therefore, several days possible. And then, covering area is quite high. So, depending on the, your purpose, you can choose different models for forecasting. This is one example. I've done, I'm done in my lab by Dr. Prada. Cloud motion vector calculation. As you see, this is a satellite images at, at the past and now. Then you can plug in this optical flow method. It will calculate pixel movement based on the 2D image. And you can see the arrow. Arrow shows the cloud motion vector. Then you can estimate motion of the cloud after several hours. So now you may see our cloud move to the northern part, for example. Then using the estimation model, you can calculate intelligence. This is a forecast. Why? Because you plug it in future distribution of clouds. The model itself, estimation is the same, but the input data is a future data. So do you see 9, 48, and 10? You can plug in two images, then you can output, these are output. Every 50 minutes, it shows the movement of the cloud, like this way. So consecutively, you can cast irradiance like this. This is a measurement, and then modeling. So you can compare. It's a forecast. Then, as I said, you can plug in future input data in the estimation model. Last one, numerical weather prediction, which is done by what? Meteorological agency. In Korea, we have a Korea Meteorological Agency. They report weather. It's the same as weather forecast. They usually focus on what? Precipitation. Rainfall, uh, solar irradiance is not major concern. Anyway, it's a basic idea. We see the physical phenomena in the atmosphere, and then we set up the governing equation, vector, equation of motion, and then temperature, and then humidity, continuity, hydrostatic equation. So these are governing equations. You can solve numerical within the grid. So it, it's 
really time consuming. It needs uh, a computational resource. So it takes uh, several hours or more with uh, super high power computing resources. This is out. So in the future, we can estimate better. So anyway, the solar it is one part, one element of the weather. But uh, as I said, solar radiance is not a major concern of the numerical weather prediction model. Therefore, we must uh, take the, the, this uh, numerical weather prediction data and then kind of the post-processing procedure to get the accurate uh, solar radiance data. Here, the, Dr. Pranda used the WRF model, weather research and forecasting model. Then as you see, up to certain part, we use the old data and then modulate this data to match the, our measurement. All right, I explained the three ways, method to form forecasting. I want to add shortly, research trend recently in forecast. I mentioned that, but it's called semi-empirical variable, but the statistical. But these days, major trend is machine learning. Machine learning is a big trend, therefore, ANN, SVR, RF, KNN, all these uh, use uh, machine learning techniques for forecasting. But the more, if we see the trend, they are ahead, it's important. Why? As I said, to control the grid, at least one day ahead of forecasting is needed. So, machine learning is new trend. Machine learning can be combined with a numerical prediction or a standardized based forecast model, whatever. So our group, uh, my student, conducted machine learning like this way. ANN, RNN, RNN is well suitable for time series data. So this is good way. Furthermore, LSTM or GRU, and then more these days, we use for solar data forecasting. So this is one example I want to explain. With the, this is a physical model, for example, for GTI. You see, RMS is a little bit decreased. More importantly, what is blue? I'm sorry, I didn't put the result. This is MBE. MBE always decreases a lot to the zero whenever you apply machine learning. So machine learning can provide kind of the fine-tuning of solar radiance estimation. But similarly, we also applied machine learning for forecasting. So in the, the, pre the post-processing, so we can plug in this kind of the LST model. And as you see, this is a PV power forecasting result. Just uh, only with the, the numerical weather prediction model, when you combine with the LSTM, you will see errors a little bit decreased like this. So, as I said, machine learning is a new trend oh. to get the better result for your PB application. All right, that's it. I tried to finish my to be a little bit advanced. Therefore, some of you may feel boring. Anyway. If you remember the basics, I think it will be really, really helpful for your studying and research. That's it. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Han Jin Lee. Uh, for all the students, if you have any questions, you can uh, raise your hand so you can ask directly, or maybe you shy, yeah. uh, you can type down on the chat box. Uh, kepada para mahasiswa, silakan jika ingin bertanya, silakan mengaktifkan fitur raise hand. Jika ingin bertanya langsung atau Anda bisa mengetik melalui chat box, silahkan. Oke, okay, Professor, maybe I have a question for you, Professor. Uh, you said that uh, we can use for forecast for forecasting, uh, we can use the like the software engineering. So, uh, which is uh, what is the most accurate 
between uh, the forecasting and the for, using the software or we can calculate uh, the data for forecasting what is the most uh, accurate from the software or from the our calculation or maybe from our research uh, in in the field professor what, what do you mean software so versus your calculation how do you, you mean that when you say the software, does it mean the commercial software? Yeah, the commercial software like maybe Helioscope or some uh, or others. Uh, comparing with maybe we uh, we can calculate from uh, from the field or maybe we can calculate from the data. Uh, what is the most accurate? I think when you say your your calculation, you mean that I think it. You have uh, your own uh, performance model. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. If we have a model, maybe uh, we, uh, we, uh, we are uh, calculating our mod model in the ground, and then we are also comparing with the software. Uh, what do you think the more accuracy with the software or with the models? So I think output is PV power. I say PV power is out. Mm. So, once when the data and then what the set information, model information is given, I think the calculation of PV power is not so difficult compared to other people. I think I mentioned one time, PV power always multiply efficiency times the incoming solar radiation. So this won't change much from the manufacturer. Definitely, it will change by temperature and others. So many software to calculate the PV power. It includes how to calculate this one, or it includes kind of the database. Depending on the order of the weather, it includes like uh, what field data. Anyway, calculation is efficiency, not so difficult. On the other hand, it's a little bit difficult, but uh, mainly like uh, what PV state oh. or other program includes the model, as I said. But uh, usually they, they take uh, weather data as input. So you can just use uh, what kind of GMI data, something like that. But these are will be unloaded instead of calculation. Sometimes they can calculate weather, but anyway, my point is, this performance model is not so difficult compared to us. What's the important accuracy of input data when you unload the input data, especially weather data? So, for PV model, I don't think it won't change much. Instead, as I said, you must get really, really good input data set. The calculation way better are not so difficult. Mm -hmm. They would be really, really similar. Is that clear? Okay, Professor, thank you. And so, <laughs> so far, I explained how to get this data uh, accurate. Okay. All right, Professor, thank you for the answer. And we have a question here from the chat box. Uh, Okay, okay, the question is, uh, how can historical data be leveraged on the hand hands the accuracy of salary resource forecasting model, Professor? I'm sorry, would you say that again? Yeah, uh, how can historical data will leverage the enhance the accuracy of solar resource forecasting models? Uh, historical data already yeah. important. Uh, uh, you know, only you could, when you use the <coughs> solar forecasting here, historical data itself, uh -huh. and the only historic, I'm actually, only historical data can be used for static model. In that case, I don't need, we don't need the satellite based the image others. So use the, actually, I do not study this part. There are many statistical models like uh -huh. Arima, whatever, so it's, it's well known for, for example, what? Stock forecasting, you know, stock forecasting is one way based on the 
with historic data, they want to forecast future data. So some uh, mathematical techniques can be applied for the statistical model. But these days, as I said, machine learning is a major part. Okay. So to train machine learning, definitely we need the historical data. So for fighting more and more. So even for the satellite based estimation or numerical weather prediction, the recent trend always combined with machine learning. For combining with machine learning, using the historical data is uh, really, really necessary. Is that okay. answer? Yes, thank you, Professor. This is, we have another question. Uh, professor, how does geographic location affect the efficiency of solar energy production and forecasting? Well, I think I must emphasize this one again. Mm -hmm. So, efficiency is given. Usually, we measure that the standard condition, like 20 degrees Celsius under what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spectrum, something like that. So this change with temperature and then spectrum a little bit. But for this one, as I said, <coughs> irradiance. Irradiance changes a lot mm -hmm. by geographical location. You know, I already showed in the map. So as I said, depending on the geographical location, maybe it's closely related to weather, like uh, clouds, whatever. Solar irradiance. So, mm -hmm. definitely, geographical variations uh, strongly affect mm -hmm. PV uh, solar irradiance. On the other hand, like the temperature, for example, Sahara Desert, you know, in Sahara Desert, what's the problem? Temperature is too high, therefore, so efficiency decreases. So, this two top efficiency and P input. These two terms are important. So these two terms are dependent on geographical location. So, but uh, many, as I said, I emphasize whether whether includes solar irradiance. It includes the temperature also. So therefore, you can imagine how weather changes by geographical location. And that's the problem. That's the key. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Professor. So, uh, for all students, if you have any question, uh, you can ask directly uh, by uh, raising your hand or you can chat on the chat box. Jika ada pertanyaan, silakan chat. Okay, from Mr. Dandy. Okay, you can open your camera, Mr. Dandy. And you can open your microphone if you have any questions. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih Pak atas waktunya. Uh, izin bertanya pada Profesor, izin bagaimana sih Prof uh, terkait efisiensi dari solar panel itu sendiri di seluruh dunia gitu sebagai sumber energi terbarukan? Itu aja Pak, mungkin pertanyaan dari saya Pak. Oke, okay, thank you Profesor. Uh, uh, he asked about the efficiency. Uh, the efficiency of so, the efficiency of solar panel, professor. Uh, what the effect of the maybe from the maybe like the latest question from the geographic side, professor. Yeah, he said. Uh, what about the efficiency of uh, the efficiency of the power panel in the whole world? I'm sorry. I think it's quite similar. Yeah. Question yeah. To the previous one. Okay. So, as I said, efficiency will be determined by the PV panel manufacturer by material <laughs> others like you may use like a, what, a silicon crystal or what a thin film using the transmom channel like the wire. So depending on the material and then electrical quality, efficiency is determined by your product. The manufacturer provides that efficiency. This efficiency is measured in standard condition. But in reality, in the field, the, the, the operation conditions differ.
different from standard condition. Therefore, one of them is inefficient. I said the temperature and then what else? Many. So these things won't be same as standard condition. So in the model, automatically calculate if you plug in accurate weather data. So efficient change will be considered in your calculation model. Is that enough or not? Okay, uh, is it clear, Professor? Okay. Uh, There's another question from Mr. Marjoko. Please open your camera and open your microphone if you are, if you want to ask directly. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, uh, mungkin saya minta tolong ke Mr. Andi ya. Professor. Jadi uh, pertanyaan saya kalau tadi kan dari teman-teman mahasiswa nanyain uh, apa namanya terkait data geografis ya. Kalau saya mungkin nanyanya lebih ke uh, solar panel itu kan tenaga, sumber utamanya adalah panas ya. Kita tahu kalau di Indonesia itu uh, iklimnya tropis sangat panas sekali. Barangkali uh, ada uh, karakteristik yang bisa digunakan untuk uh, meningkatkan efisiensi dari si solar panel ini. Maksudnya memang panas tapi tidak uh, sembarang tempat panas bisa digunakan. Contoh PLN kemarin kan kita baru saja bangun. Uh, apa namanya untuk solar panel terbesar ya di Asia Tenggara yang di Cirata, gitu nah itu apakah ada uh, 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 karakteristik yang harus dipenuhi agar solar panel tersebut bisa bekerja maksimal seperti itu oh, terima kasih okay, thank you, Professor. I will uh, translate for you so the solar panel are depend for the temperature Professor and uh, Mr. Majoko said that is there uh, characteristic can improve the uh, photovoltaic energy like uh, for instance like uh, in indonesia we have a solar a floating solar panel the, the 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 biggest floating solar panel is it uh, uh, is uh, is it more uh, is it we have a uh, influence for the, from the a floating solar panel or we can have a do if we uh, does we have a more you know like uh, he said that the can we increase the characteristic of the photovoltaics the uh, I'm sorry. when you say characteristics yeah yeah yes when uh, he said that uh, can we increase the characteristic of the photovoltaics it's yeah uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, he said that uh, the from the temperature professor you mean the temperature yeah for, uh, think, yeah. as we know that the photovoltaic are depend from the for the temperature there so uh, can we uh, take more the efficiency or take more the care can we increase the, uh, you know, the characteristic maybe for the uh, temperature? That's true. The floating, you mentioned the floating. Yeah. Uh, floating solar panel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Korea, we have a floating PV. It's a kind of system mm -hmm. application. So on the lake, on the river, wherever, definitely it has a favorable effect into the water. Water temperature could be lower than the ground temperature. So uh, the temperature increase by solar distance can be reduced. That's the one merit. That's true. But as you know, there are many other uh, other disadvantages. So, for example, always flat on the, on the ground. So generally, solar readers could be tilted this angle roughly the same as the latitude of the location site. So this is another uh, but reduction in living power. But uh, as you know, it can save space because in 
Korea, we don't have many space to install TV panels. At the same time, the, as you know, the, the temperature increase can be minimized by water cooling. But uh, sometimes you need more uh, structure to protect the panel because it could be floating. For the more water infiltration can be if you install in the ocean, you know, you must think about the salt. But the, anyway, uh, I think that's one of the way in terms of application. In Korea, we think about many applications. Mm -hmm. You can install EV panels yeah. in the middle of the farm. Yeah. Or uh, in or up the road. Anyway. Basically, the power of calculation would be the similar, but the factors to affect these two terms would be a little bit different. Okay, thank you for the answer, Professor. I think, uh, do you have uh, more time or uh, we can end this discussion, Professor? Because this is more than one hour. More, more questions? Okay, uh, students, do you have any questions? If you don't, uh, if you don't have any questions, so we can close this uh, international guest lecture. Okay, Thank you so much. I think that there's no question, Professor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, finally we have arrived in the last agenda. Uh, once again, thank you for Professor Han Jin Lee for amazing inspiration. And thank you for the comedy for arranging this event. And thank you very much for everyone for joining today's fellow session. Before we close, maybe we can take a photo session, Professor. Yes, uh, please. Uh, kita akan foto bersama. Silahkan aktifkan kameranya. Please, so for all the students, please turn on off your camera. We will have a photo session. Professor, can you close the presentation? Oh, just a <laughs> Yes. Ibu Sophie, monitor. Just a Is it clear now? Yes, now it's it clear. Ibu Sophie, bisa monitor saya? Sebentar. Uh, Ibu Sofi bisa bantu untuk uh, foto? Yes. Oke, okay, just a moment, sir. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay, uh, alright. Oke, okay, we have photo for the first. One, two, and three. Ya, yeah, yeah, silahkan. Okay, one more time. One more time. Okay. Okay, thank you very much once again, Professor Han Jin. Thank you very much for all the participants. And I would like to apologize if there's uh, many mistaken for me as a moderator during this session. Well, the overall presentation conclusions express our goals that by developing knowledge through the creation of scientific scientific theories, concept, and idea, we might improve society knowledge. Hopefully, the presentation are beneficial for us. Uh, thank you very much uh, once again uh, for your kind attention. And Professor Han Jin Lee, thank you very much for your, uh, for your time. <laughs> and I hope that we can meet again in another guest lecture. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor. See you. Next time, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I love you so much. Oke, jangan lupa untuk isi presensi ya, sudah ada di chat boxnya. Baik, Bapak. Terima kasih, Pak. Baik, terima kasih semuanya. Nanti tugasnya akan dilanjutkan. Baik, Pak. Oke, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak. Baik.